this topic is a little bit special, okay? We will be talking about how we move from an IPv4 internet to a IPv6 internet. You see, yeah, it's n there's no way we turn down all the routers in the world and upgrade to version 6 simultaneously and turn them back on and hope that they will just work. Mm -hmm. No, no way. It's really, really risky, and hey, we are all right living in different time zones. What do you mean by having a flag day? And not to mention that turning the entire net down for an entire day, okay, and wait until all the debugging and upgrading is done. Well, yeah, some part of the world might panic. So how will the network operate? with part of the internet running IPv4 and some other parts running IPv6. So transition from IPv4 to IPv6, this is what we meant to talk about. How do we allow the mix of IPv4 router to IPv6 routers? And the technique, okay, let me tell you ahead of time, is called tunneling, okay? Establishing tunnels okay, between routers okay, at the edge of the IPv6 network to IPv4 and then back to IPv6. And the technique is working this way. So if there's a packet generated from you know, the IPv6 space, so then the network layer in the machine in the IPv6 space will be generating an IPv6 packet. Once it hits okay, this border between IPv6 and IPv4, this router standing at the border is implement, it will, will be implementing both IPv4 and 6. Okay? So this router will also be doing this. Okay? Take the IPv4 packet generated from the IPv, uh, take the IPv6 packet generated in the IPv6 space and encapsulate that into an IPv4 packet. Okay, so this is the IPv4 packet, okay, and this is the original IPv6 packet, okay, generated from the IPv6 space. So that IPv4 packet is encapsulated, so being contained, okay, in this bigger IPv4 packet. All right. So you see here, we'll have packet header fields here source IP address, destination IP address, and etc, etc. Now IPv4 packet here coming from the border of IPv4 and IPv6 connection is going to travel the IPv4 network fine because the header fields interpretable by the routers in the IPv4 space and eventually reaching the other end okay, the other border between IPv6 and IPv4 and that border router there would extract okay, the IPv6 packet, the blue part here, from the IPv4 packet and then forward it further on onto the native IPv6 space here. Right? This enables an IPv6 machine talking to an IPv6 machine with uh, the middle part being IPv4. I know, allow me to illustrate. So in this scenario, we have an IPv6 space to the left and another IPv6 space to the right. Let's suppose we have data we want to send from A to F. Okay? Both of them, version 6, they should be able to send data to each other all right. Now the problem is this. Yeah, an IPv6 packet here will travel through the version 6 space, but as soon as it hits the version 4 space, yeah, these routers, they are old, they don't recognize the version 4 format, they will not be able to handle the packet and forward it down this way, okay? And that is why we need tunnel. Okay. So what's being done, okay, in the tunnel is this, B being the border router, E being the border router separating the version 4 and version 6 space. 
it's implementing version 6 for sure, but also version 4 as well. Therefore, BNE both carry IPv6 address as well as IPv4 address. By setting up tunnel, B now actually record E's version 4 IP address. E here records B's version 4 IP address. So it's essentially the two ends okay, exchange the IPv4 address. So once that's done, usually this is done um, offline by the network admins. Okay. Once that is done, then let's consider okay, A here generated the packet, the blue one, and we're forwarding it towards the destination. Right? Once it hits the border router here before the IPv4 space, B, the border router, is going to do this encapsulate the blue packet inside a version 4 packet. In the version 4 packet, the source address is going to be B itself. Destination address is going to be the other end of the tunnel. Okay, the other end of the tunnel's IPv4 address. Now, this is an IPv4 packet, source being B, destination being E, then the IPv4 network is capable of forwarding this packet over, okay, at least to E. So E is going to receive the packet next, and being the border router, okay, being the other end of the tunnel, E is just going to extract the blue packet out of the red one and forward it down to the rest of the IPv6 space. And this is when F here, we see uh, the packet that is supposed to go for F. Last slide here is not technical at all, it's to talk about the adoption of version 6. So Google once released this number. 8% of the clients worldwide accessing Google services are IPv6. Ouch, please don't. NIST uh, is a government body there tracking all sorts of standards as well as maintaining some statistics. So this releases this. 30%, 33% of the US government internet is IPv6. Okay. US government is promoting strongly okay, the move to IPv6. And to make the numbers even more pathetic, this is after 20 years of effort. Okay. Ouch. Ah, but why, right? If you think at the application layer, we have new applications rising. Okay. Uh, IG, Facebook, Netflix, uh, other video streamings. Okay. Zoom, um, YouTube. Okay. Newer services rising. Within each service, uh, the protocol also get upgraded quickly, right? Changing from one version to another version. But unlike application layer changes, network layer changes, it seems very hard to do. It's not like undoable, right? We just need to upgrade okay, the routers, upgrade the clients, reconfigure the routers, reconfigure the clients. Why is it so hard? Why is it so much easier to upgrade one app 